Let's just jump into it because like most times where we begin this, um, I'm already angry <laughs> and, and you were laughing because every time I ask to check your audio, I say, can you just say something? And now to your credit, you don't actually say it, but you pause, but I can just feel the tension build where all you want to do is say something. <laughs> so this episode is going to be a little different because it's all about me, baby. Yep. You're the star of your own show. <laughs> ah, finally getting some attention around here. Yeah, I've been doing this show for well over a year now, and really it's all just been building up to this moment where I could focus on myself. Yeah. So the reason we're doing this one, and I'm going to explain this in the intro, um, but for those who've been following along for, uh, gosh, better part of a year and maybe even more recently, I've referenced the fact that I've been going after a world record. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Uh, and I keep leaving these little cliffhangers like, oh, maybe an update soon. More to come. And you know what? People deserve an update. And I think in my mind, I had like this grand plan that I was going to get the world record. We were going to have this awesome wrap up episode. I was going to have great news to share and everything was going to be perfect. Put a bow on it. Mm-hmm. And as of what? A week ago? Yeah. About a week ago? About Two week weeks ago? ago? Maybe you had a week, a week to sulk. I've had a week to sulk. Oh, you've been just waiting to drop that. Oh, wow. No. Oh, <laughs> damn. I just gave it away. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Well, you did, but that's all right. Um, <sighs> no, I found out that the submission I put in in February got denied. Mm-hmm. 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 Do you want to tell them why it got denied? I will. I will. But let me first say, here's why I decided to do this episode. Okay. Because... Oftentimes, I think, whether it's social media or just what you see on TV or what gets put out, you only see the final product when it's been all buttoned up and everything went as planned. Yeah. Right? You see the story of this person who did pull it off, right? And they package it up and they present it to you in this picture-perfect way. And I was like, you know what's way more common and way more relatable that everyone deals with is like when shit doesn't go right. Yeah. Or when you set a big goal for yourself and you don't get it mm-hmm. or something happens or you know what I mean? Like that is so much more common. So I was like, you know what? This is my show. I'm going to focus on like the way shit really works <laughs> mm-hmm. and use this as an opportunity to talk about like, you know, granted it's, it's small adversity, but like, how do you deal with adversity? Yeah. Um, especially within the context of setting for yourself, like an important goal. Right. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that's way more common. Um, so what was your question? What was the goal? Yeah, well, yeah, explain it from... Right, great point. Okay. Let's so start he, from the beginning of when you decided. Let's go to the beginning. So, yes, the record that I've been going after, there's actually a couple. But can, I, can, I, can I... So, Kenny has always been very good at pull-ups mm-hmm. throughout his life. And <laughs> you... To tr- just... We, you, to do the decathlon, there's like a pull-up section, how many pull-ups you can do in one go. Right. So, for training that, you used to do weighted pull-ups. Yes. And that opened up your mind to the possibilities of breaking your record because you're like, oh, wait, I think I could do that. And I'll tell you exactly how it happened. So, yeah, the the pull-up event that you're talking about for the decathlon, it's just like most body weight pull-ups unbroken. Yeah. Right? And I, I don't even know what I could actually do. Like, I, I have always had a knack for pull-ups. Yeah. And I think at that time I was getting like 40, 45, which is a, a very high number. Yeah. Um, But – what happens is during the event, that pull-ups is like, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth event yeah, maybe over the course of the first, day. And yeah. so like you've already run a 400 and you've done these other things and you're exhausted. So I was like, man, for me to be able to really max out this event, like I need to get so good at pull-ups that I can do 40 in my sleep sort of thing, mm-hmm. right? So I started like looking into, okay, like, you know, pull-up training. What do I need to do beyond just kind of what I'm doing? And I got really into like weighted pull-ups. And then I found out in reading, like, there's actual weighted pull-up world records. And I was like, oh, my God. So just looking into it, purely just, like, wanting to know what that record is, I saw a couple of these records. And I was like, man, I don't think I'm that far off of that. Mm -hmm. And the one in particular was the most pull-ups in under a minute with 100 pounds. 
on your back. Yeah. On your back, right? And now that's actually an important uh, point there. Yeah, because you were doing them around <laughs> your waist. Yeah, right. So I think most people have seen. Um, it's like a belt with weights hanging between your legs. Right. It's the belt. You got the chain. You, you put the, you know, the actual like plate uh, on mm-hmm. the chain. And yeah, everyone's seen that. So I've done those since college. And I've, like I said, I, I've always been very good at those for whatever reason, just kind of naturally. And so mm-hmm. it wouldn't be uncommon for me to throw like a plate, two plates, three plates, which would be like 145 pounds. Mm-hmm. And so when I would do, you know, like my heavy pull up days, maybe trying to do like anywhere from three to five reps, I might have like 135 or maybe even more. Um, so I was like, man, 100 pounds. And I think at the time the record was like 16 reps set by someone in like, I don't know, Eastern Europe. Yeah. And I was like, 16 reps in a minute. Like, I don't think I'm that far off. So just on a whim one morning using, now this is important, the belt, right? Mm -hmm. I just tried to see how many I could rip off. And I think I got like 13 or 14. Yeah. Now there's a couple of key points here. And this is going to factor into the story. Uh, My form was probably not great. Mm -hmm. I was probably using a lot of momentum and I was using the belt. Right. But that day I said, you know what? I think I can get this record. Seems like it'll be fun. It's not going to completely alter my life. I'll just work at it like, you know, two hours a week sort of thing when I'm in the gym. Mm -hmm. So I set that goal. I quickly, (laughs) upon actually trying to do a pull up with it in a backpack versus weighted around my waist, found out it was completely different. Yeah. Way harder. I bet. But I mean, coming from someone who can't even do one body weight pull up, I'm working. I'm almost there. You'll get there, babe. Yeah, I have full confidence. But yeah, doing yeah. So I don't really know what would be harder, <laughs> but that looks harder. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's way harder. And I I, I want to say when I actually tried it in a backpack, and when I say backpack, like I got an old school backpack with the zipper broken, and I just yeah. crammed as many plates, oh, dumbbells. I those days. Yeah. I, I just shoved as much weight in there as I could, and I somehow got it to 100 pounds. Yeah. I might have gotten like four or five sort of thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, whoa, because the weight is centered like now on your back, so like your, your body angle is different, the way you pull is different, everything's different. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, man, I might have bitten off a little bit more than I could chew, but I wasn't going to tell anybody. I also didn't like announce it to the world either, so I was like, whatever, I got time to figure this thing out. So that was like two years ago. Yeah. Maybe. No, it was like a year and change. Year and a half ago? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, point being, the record's 100 pounds, uh, most pull-ups in a minute. Now, you don't have to do them unbroken. So as long as you do it under a minute, you can actually come down from the bar. Yeah. Right? So that factors a lot into this, too. So you could do like eight, take a break, do five, take a break, do three. Or you could just do one, take a break, one, take a break. Mm -hmm. You could do like I did. I tried to do like 16 straight and we'll talk about that. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to set like a big kind of crazy weird goal. And more than that, I thought my kids would get an absolute kick if I actually could break a world record. Yeah. And your wife. And my wife. (laughs) And my wife. Um, Now, if I'm being completely honest, I really just want like that certificate hanging up in the man cave. Yeah, that's all I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. collecting dust for like 20 years down the road. People are like, what is that? Like that? <laughs> oh, that's that world record I used to hold in pull-ups. Like if I can break that record, uh-huh. my um, street cred as a dad moving forward, like what I'm, that's what I'm dreaming about. Yeah, like, oh, that's that world record holder. Well, not even that, but like, uh, you know what I mean? Like just, you know, kind of like the Ugh. scruffy haired kid who comes over who's 13 hanging out with my sons. They're like, your dad held a pull-up world record? They're like, yeah. They're like, what record? You're like, I'm not really sure, but he held one. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, so that's really what drives me. Yeah. Now, here's what I think people need to know. The process of breaking an actual official Guinness World Record is very involved. Yeah, it's really tedious. It's really tedious. So um, I already told people that I got disqualified, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get there. However, um, the process of actually measuring the record like you have to have multiple video angles and when you submit Mm -hmm. it it's not just enough to have like a front and a side angle like you have to submit slow motion footage yeah 
so that whoever's critiquing it can like get down frame by frame to make sure you got over the bar, make sure you locked out your arms, make sure you didn't use any momentum. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of crazy. You have to have multiple judges. So we have like fitness experts. I had local firemen come. Yeah. I think you have to have two or three. You have to have like a public, two public officials of some sort, mm -hmm. one fit, uh, fitness expert. So like a trainer. Or right, right, right. You had like a gym owner and a trainer. Yeah, you have to have someone there to judge it. But then after that, you submit it to Guinness and then someone there yeah. actually verifies the process as well. And it has to be done in public. So it's not the sort of thing that you can like do it in your basement. Yeah. So COVID also complicated things quite a bit. Yeah, totally. I'd set this big goal. I was all gassed up to go do it. And then all of a sudden, like every gym in the state and country was shut down. <laughs> so I was like, well, shit. So anyways, um, the process for applying is actually pretty involved, but whatever. I didn't care. Not a big deal. So the day of, and actually I should mention, I, I've tried this before back in August. Yeah. And you got 18. So the record at oh, that time like, was when you 16. actually tried it. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking when you tried it at home and you got 18. Well, that's the thing. So I, I've done 16. it. I've done it at home a couple times. Right. And yeah. that's why I'm like, okay. I have enough confidence I can get this done that I'm going to drag all these random people out to come and verify this thing for me. Yeah. Right. And like family comes and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but the first time I tried, the record was 16. So I tried in August of 2020. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that day, what did I, I get? 17. Yeah. But here's the point. Like you have to be so spot on. There can be like no hiccups in your form. And I, the mistake that I made, the one gym that would allow us to actually come in and do it, it was actually a fantastic gym, but it's like a CrossFit gym. So their bars were way higher off the ground than anything I trained with at home. Mm -hmm. Like I can't just stand on the ground and reach up and grab the bar. So it was like, shit, that's kind of a new element. Yeah. So I had to like slide this box over and I tried to use this pad to get me to the right distance where I wasn't very far from the bar. I did this weird thing where I like, I left my feet on the ground on like two reps Yeah. before I pulled, which yeah. you're not allowed to do. So, okay. So that one didn't count now. So it's like, great. Um, so I'm like, okay, no worries. I'll come back in two weeks. I'll give myself a little time to rest and I'll do it again. Well, in the meantime, someone goes out and breaks the record. Mm -hmm. The same guy, actually, he moves it from 16 to 18, 18. reps yeah. officially. Great. So I'm not ready to do that. I go out and try it. I get the timing all wrong and I actually hurt myself doing it. Um, so I had to take a little time off again, more adversity. So yeah. moving forward, I'm like, okay, now it's at 18. I need to like completely, I need to change my strategy. Like I need to get this dialed in, whatever I do all that. And we can talk about that once I actually do it successfully. Um, but by the time February rolls around, I'm like feeling good again. I, I think I had a day where, I don't know, I might have even been on like a conference call, just, you know, whatever, listening. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I wonder where I'm at today. Let me just try. Let me throw 100 pounds on my back. Let me see how many I can do. And I got 16 straight, unbroken. Mm -hmm. Now, the previous record was 16. So that's like, I did 16 reps in, I don't know, maybe like 20 seconds or less. So mm -hmm. I was like, I am going to destroy this thing. So I'm like, okay, let's set it up. We, we get a gym to let us come in and do it. We get everyone to come out. Um, and what's really funny is on like the day where we do these things, people just like come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, because it's cool. And to break a world record, like in an official capacity is cool. Yeah. I would If I was in a gym and like I heard someone was doing that, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go peek and see what they're doing. Well, what's really fun about it too is like people just like getting behind this like weird quirky sort of like achievements yeah. do you know what i mean like yeah there's a reporter there did an article about you yeah exactly well that's the thing like people will come out to watch people pop the most balloons in like 60 seconds like there's just yeah. something about like <laughs> i would actually love watching that <laughs> that just sounds soothing i i say that because i actually just watched like a soothing. video that so would be it. like oh my god i would think that would be super hectic and yeah like, but it's like and you're like oh, oh really wow i gotta watch that video that sounds fun yeah Anyway, okay, but there's right. something about that, right? Like when people are like, oh, world record's about to be broken. I'm about to see something that no one has ever done on the planet. 
So like this time, you know, we didn't, we didn't like it. Yeah, really. I was going to say, I was imagining someone like going around and sitting on balloons. Oh, them. you're imagining someone sitting on the most balloons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm popping them with their butts <laughs> like you used to when you were a kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how are they popping them? I'm sorry. I just have to know this. I think as a follow up, we need to find out how many balloons you can pop <laughs> with your butt. That just <laughs> sounds like good TV. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we like we didn't really have any family come out. I was like, look, I just want to get in, get out, knock this thing out. I don't want any outs. I just want to like be focused, get it done. Yeah. And like before I knew it, I mean, there must have been, I don't know, 30, 40 people there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People would just like walk in from the grocery store. Be like I heard someone was it was just kind of cool. Yeah, we didn't even have all our kids there. Not even all our kids. Two out of the three. Yeah, um, Uncle Sean was there. Yeah, Uncle Sean was there. What's up, Uncle Sean? Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, so it, it was just a lot of fun. But anyways, that day I go in, I felt really strong. Um, I was actually sick the night before. Not that that's an excuse. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh no. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do it. And I, I was know, like, full food, together. Food poisoning or what? I don't know what I had. But anyways, yeah. I actually got a good night's sleep and I felt pretty good. Um, and so the day of, you know, I had this whole strategy. I was like, I'm not gonna get 19. I'm gonna go out and try and get like 21. Like I mm-hmm. felt that strong. Yeah. And there's something about, I could have been maybe because I was a little sick, but like there's something about like when that moment comes, I, wait, I, I forgot about that. That was horrible. That was terrible. We were going to have to cancel. Yeah, we we're going to have to cancel. I know. <laughs> That's uh, the worst timing. Yeah, it was terrible, terrible. <laughs> but I felt great in my warm up. I felt crazy strong. I was like, oh no, we're good. Like I'm going to, I'm going to destroy this thing. But like, there's something about that adrenaline. Mm-hmm. It almost like wipes you out. Even something yeah. that's such a short spurt. So it's like you really have to go in and kind of like get yourself to like just calm, calm down. down. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, Which is hard when there's so many people like now. Like Not that like it, it, I mean, it was like 50 people mm-hmm. in a room just like watching you warm up. Isn't that funny? <laughs> during COVID times. <laughs> during COVID times. It was well, a big room. And it's it, like, an open door. <laughs> you know, playing football in college, like not, you know, what, it was Ivy League football. So not every game was like packed, but we had like some some big crowds and in high school, right? I mean, a high school, I don't know, state track meet, state track finals. Like I've competed in front of like in high tense situations. Yeah. There's something weird about when it's a smaller group that's very focused on what you're doing. Yeah. And it's they're just weird. watching you. Yeah. And I'm not the type, I don't get nervous. Like in that sense, like I said, like it's, it's a weird thing. It's like too intimate almost. Yeah. It's almost like if there were more people, like if I was in a stadium, there would be so many people that I wasn't fixated on who's in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when yeah. it's like there's like 20 people like watching you, you, you know, you're like, oh, why did I put myself in this situation? This is strange. I don't, I don't They're need, all strangers. I don't need the stress in my life anymore. I'm just trying to do some pull-ups, people. Um, so anyways, I I did awesome. I, I felt like I got it. Um and I think, what did we say? Unofficially 20. Yeah. Knowing that the 20. 20- yeah, we celebrated. We were like, oh, he did it. 20. Knowing Boom. that the 20th one was like right at, right at the buzzer sort yeah. of thing. So but we I was were like, like, okay, if if it's not 20, then it's definitely 19. But like 20, we, I thought it was 20. Right. Right, right, right. Um, so I felt pretty good. Now, I knew there was a couple reps where I kind of like in, in my attempt to go fast I didn't quite maybe go down all the way sort of thing, but I was like, oh man, this is pretty close. And I even sent it to uh, Adam Sandel, former guest, Mm -hmm. also holds, I don't know how many pull-up world records he holds. Mm -hmm. I was like, Adam, man, can you take a look at this? Can you tell me what you think? Like, should I take the time to submit this? And he was like, ah, it's pretty close, man. He's like, you might've done it. I was like, all right, let's roll the dice. Let's submit it. Yeah. Now the thing about these world records that's so strange is it like, it takes a lot of time to get them reviewed yeah right like if you're just an average person and you submit a world record to guinness like at minimum they say conservatively like you'll hear back in three months Mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of like on these previous attempts when i was like well i'll let you know like i don't know i won't hear for months but this time i was like screw this i've dedicated a lot of time to this i'm gonna pay to have it expedited it was like what 500 bucks 600 bucks yeah it was expensive not a small amount of money no. A lot of cryptocurrency could be bought with that money. Oh, God. And since appreciate at a rate of, anyways. <laughs> so whatever, I do it. I felt good about it. I really wanted to know fast. And of course, I didn't find out quickly. I found out like two months later, even paying for it. Um, and it got disqualified. Mm-hmm. 
right? And so I thought to myself, I was like, look, I have talked to so many people who talk about like overcoming adversity. How many people have I ha had on the show talk about like trust the process and do all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to give myself literally like five minutes to feel sorry for myself. Yeah. And then I'm just going to get right back to like drafting up a new strategy to get this thing done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but no, I'm serious. And, and, and so, you know, the reason I bring this up is I don't think I would have been able to. <laughs> I, I definitely would have done a podcast about failing. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my biggest fear was actual failure. Yeah. And I think that's the reason I wanted to kind of have this talk today. One, because it's like, I don't know, this cool kind of wacky thing that I've been trying to do. And I've been integrating a lot of the stuff that I've learned from our guests into this training. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's a point that I didn't, I didn't come back to. Like when I initially attempted the 100 pounds and got like five, five reps – I was like, whoa. I was like, what can I take from what Cal Dietz is doing with triphasic training? Mm -hmm. um, one of the first guests who's actually going to come back on here in the next few weeks, Chris Barnard, like reached out to him. I was like, hey, man, how, how can I train for this? And he gave me a ton of uh, great information and actually wrote up some programming for the first couple months. Um, everything from like recovery, sleep, nutrition. How do I, you know, fuel right after a workout to get them like taking all these things from the show, which I hope listeners are doing and incorporating into their own life as well. Like I literally got to a point where I was not only, only able to get to a, a range where I could almost do 16. Like I could do 16 unbroken. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, if you're willing to absorb from these like thought leaders and experts in the space and find a way to integrate it, like you can see real measurable improvement. So that was one reason why I wanted to talk about it. But the other is, you know, I, I think like most people, so adverse to sharing. Why are you, what? <laughs> are you laughing at me? No, 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 never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. Go ahead and finish. Okay. Am I, am I being over the top right now? No, no, no. What you're saying is great. I just had a funny thought of me. <laughs> never mind. Okay. Tell me in a minute then. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, like I felt it was important to talk about it. Because like if you're setting a big goal for yourself or a hard goal, like there's going to be adversity and totally, like yeah. there's going to be setbacks. And that is so much more common than setting a big ambitious goal and just achieving it in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think that there's like no matter what your goal is, there's always whether it's literal, liter little or big failures along the way to achieving it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like you were saying in this social media world we live in that no one shows that like the yeah. like the you know trials and tribulations along the way mm -hmm. so i think it's kind of refreshing to it drives me nuts yeah everything looks perfect everything's like so curated and nothing makes me angrier that's not true a lot of shit makes me angry but I, it's very frustrating to me the <laughs> people who try and pitch like a quick fix yeah or it's like, hey, buy my program for $40 and you'll be able to do this in three months. It's like bullshit. Yeah. So I can't stand that stuff. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to be one of these people that kind of perpetuates that. Yeah. Like this unreasonable or unachievable. Like let's say I do get this record and I believe I will. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I'm, and I've been training really hard again. And I think I, I do want to at some point do another episode where I talk about how I've been training for this. Because it really – I've been incorporating a lot of the stuff from these guests – um, and it, looking back, I can even kind of pinpoint what I took from a conversation and how I incorporated it and how it helped me. Um, but it drives me nuts when, you know, folks just show this shiny finished product mm -hmm. and they don't share the journey. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people do that, which is also why social media is so amazing mm -hmm. in some respects, but I just didn't want to do that. Right. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want to know what I was laughing about? Sure. What were you laughing about? I was thinking like, it. I don't know why, but like when you first wanted to do this and you didn't have, like you realized it was, you needed a backpack. I thought that you were going to like need to use me as weight. So I would like have to go down to the gym and like crawl onto you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's going to be fun. I was going to say. <laughs> you never once asked me to do that. Did you think I needed you to do that? Or yeah. did you just hope I needed you to do that? <laughs> you didn't ask me once. Not even once. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, we could try that. <laughs> we, could do, we could do that one for the gram. People might get into that. Or they'd be like, why are we watching these two, <laughs> two, these two weirdos do pull-ups together? This is strange. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't even that funny, but in my brain, I was as you were talking, I was like imagining myself like clinging onto you like a claw. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, maybe there's people out there who relate to that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm glad that we could do that if that would make you happy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you got it. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm getting very close. I'm going to attempt it again mm-hmm. soon. Um, the other thing too, and so he, here's, I think a couple of the things that I, I wanted people to take away from this. And this actually comes from my JV high school basketball coach. And this has been said a million times, but it really stands out. Um, because very formative years. Oh my God. So. The, the most formative years. So what? J, uh, I was a freshman, maybe sophomore, <laughs> freshman, sophomore for a little bit. So what, I'm like 14, 15. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had a really strong father figure at home. So it's not like I was searching for that. But this guy just fit the bill like he was building men yeah. in the most formative way. And I maybe I've talked about him on the podcast before, but like he was so intense that when we were like kids, middle school, we'd go to watch like the big high school basketball game on Friday night That's so and, cute. and you get there early. Right. Because you wanted good seats like these, these, you know, we were, you know, we played in like the big division in Washington state for whatever that's worth. Um, but these gyms are only so big. So you get there early and so you see them warm up and you have good seats. But so you'd always inevitably catch the end of the JV game. And mm-hmm. I just remember Tom Royce, he would always wear loafers. <laughs> okay. And he had the loudest yell. It's I still can hear it, but more than that, he would slam his foot in the ground when he was trying to make a point to his players. So you were scared of him? So not only was I scared of him, I remember the parents were so worried that someday their kids were going to have to go play for him (laughs) because they just thought, I mean, because they, he he had this scowl, Mm -hmm. this just like when someone made the wrong decision or a bad play. That's what we thought, and I'll, I'll tell you what was actually happening. But he would just get the scowl, and you could just see it, and you could just see his blood pressure, pressure rising. And then you thought he was going to pound a hole in the gym floor the way that he would stamp his foot down. And he was <laughs> like, oh, my God. Turns <laughs> out he was the most inspirational, positive person. I mean, you talk about, like, high moral character and like building strong like moral principles and like young men, like that was him. And the only time that he was mad really is if you weren't executing to your ability or you weren't giving full effort. Aww. Like you couldn't, you couldn't see that just by watching. Like I remember one time we were like a summer tournament and we were actually, we were really good. And we had, <laughs> ju- we had just lost the championship game and I don't know, we, we, we played awesome. We played our hearts out. Um, I remember, but you know, we were getting screamed at the whole time, but we all like got fired up by that. Like for the right type of kid, like that lights a fire under you. Some kids I'm sure will just fold under that, but like we enjoyed it. But I remember, I remember, um, we were sitting around after and we saw parents from the visiting team walk by. And I just remember hearing this mother be like, those poor kids, (laughs) those poor kids, what the coach is doing to them. (laughs) <laughs> Meanwhile, we love this guy like a father. We would have run through a wall for him. But anyways, what he told me was, look, Ken, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. So like everything that we did was about like hard work, mm-hmm. effort, like paying the price. You know what I mean? Paying the price to actually get the reward later. Um, um, I'm all fired up now. Are you fired up? But yeah. no, that's that's something I, I was thinking about with this record. It's like, good. I'm glad it's hard. Uh-huh. If it was easy, everyone would do it. If I was able to get it the first try, like I probably probably wouldn't care that much about it. Yeah. You know, but the fact that like I keep having to go back to the drawing board and like figure out a new strategy, a new way to get better at something, um, it makes me enjoy it that much more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you relate to that at all? Totally. (laughs) Everybody likes to chase. That's odd. Not everybody, but a a lot of people like to chase. I agree. I agree. But yeah, I I think that was one of the biggest things. It's like, look, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And I think that's why for me, it has become something worth pursuing, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think for people listening, you know, their goals vary wildly. It it could be, I want to get in better shape. 
I have a, a marathon coming up or I'm doing some sort of weight, like whatever it is, I think, you know, don't be hesitant to set a big goal because the harder it is to achieve, I think the more you're going to enjoy it. Um, and also a, a big piece of this too is just like, man, you got to get over that fear of failure. Like, and I know what that's like. I even remember in college, um, you know, we would, we would power clean and I just never power cleaned. I just didn't do it in high school. So I wasn't very good at it. Good at a lot of other things. Um, and I probably had what it took to be good at it, but I just really didn't like failing in front of other people. I like that. Yeah. You I relate I, to that? I, no, no, no. I knew that about you from a very, very early in our relationship. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Um, well, number one. When you won't, you still have not ridden a horse because you've never done it, and you don't want to like try it in front of people and poten- potentially not be good at it. And number two, water skiing. <laughs> okay, number one, that is not why I have not been on a horse. <laughs> okay. Primary reason is I'm incredibly allergic to horses, <laughs> which you still do not appreciate. Uh, I'm just like no, that, I can't. That can't. That doesn't compute to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like I stop breathing <laughs> when I'm around them, but that's okay. Yeah. Um. But no, like with the power cleaning thing, like I would go in early and I would like try and figure it out when people weren't around or I'd stay late. Why didn't you ask the coach to help you? I would. But I also, this wasn't like a conscious thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like someone called it out to me and they're like, you just need to sell out here and be okay with failing in front of other people. Cause like we don't give a shit. And I see you coming in before and after to try and figure it out when people aren't around. Aww. But like, I didn't, re- I was just like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to put in extra time. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess I wasn't willing to Did commit to it when other people were around. Yeah, I was fine at it. I mean. It's not your, not one of your specialties? Uh, no, I was good. But like, it wasn't that required to be good. I mean, I could, I don't know. We, we, we hang clean. I mean, I don't remember what I hung clean, like 315 or 335 or something. So I, I got good at it, but. I don't know. I didn't care that much about it. Yeah. Anyway, people are, people are like, what are we talking about here? It's okay. <laughs> you don't lose sleep over it anymore. No, 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 I don't. But anyway, so just kind of, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I, <laughs> I think a big breakthrough and something that a lot of these really good guests have said mm-hmm. in their own way is like, you need to become like accustomed to failure. Yeah. Not in the sense of like, you're a loser, in the sense of like <laughs> understanding it's just a part of the process to getting ultimately where you want to go. Yeah. Right. Um, stop getting so hung up on the fact that like people are going to judge you and think you're a failure. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a perfect example. This decathlon that we've talked about a lot. I yeah. re- I was, I set the goal. I was like, I'm going to win this damn thing. Cause mm-hmm. that's just, I don't know. That's just how I like to do yeah. things. And I remember the first year training for it. Cause I really hadn't done much. Um, in terms of like sprinting, running in like years, I'd lifted, but just like to stay in shape. And I was like, man, I'm really putting myself out there. You know, uh-huh. like my friends are going to know how strong I am. They're going to know exactly how fast I am. They're going to know exactly <laughs> how I stack yeah, up. Everyone's bait- waiting with bated breath. Exactly. No, but that's the <laughs> point, right? I went out and I did really well and I came really close to winning, right? I just, just came short and I kind of blew it for myself. No one gave a shit. Yeah. People thought I went out and did a triathlon. It just shows like, they're like, oh, wow, like I, that's great. Like, how hard was the swimming? I'm like, the swimming? <laughs> like, what are you? I'm like, oh, you don't care at all. <laughs> like, you care about this so much as uh, you need to know enough to have a 30-second conversation about it. Like, people yeah. don't care. Yeah. Like, you just need to get out of your own head, I think, is the lesson there. Um, I care. You cared a lot, yeah, which I, I appreciate a whole lot. <laughs> your kids cared. But it just goes to show. My mom like, cared. <laughs> you like, you have to, yeah, your mom cared a lot. Shout out to Orla. Um, she's always got my back. I appreciate that very much. Uh, but you know what I mean? You just have to shed that fear of failure because honestly, like people don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give you another great example. A lot of people in our inner circle thought I broke the world record in that time between me doing it. And getting the disqualification. Yeah. Well, because you... Didn't uh, like, care. No one cared. That you got disqualified? No, no one cared that I yeah, broke there, it. There, no, my dad's still telling me you broke it. Well, that's because He's, he's like, I saw the video. You uh, broke it. Yeah, Joe also has my back. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that as, as well. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I didn't expect that there'd be some, like, there wasn't going to be a parade down Main <laughs> Street in our hometown. No, there was. I canceled it. 
Oh, my God. Um, But you know what I mean? Like, you just got to do it for yourself. And I think there's two really recent conversations that resonate with me. One is the Ray Cash Care. You got to win and learn. There's no Mm -hmm. loss, right? Not to say there's not a scoreboard, but, like, when something doesn't – It's okay. When something doesn't work out the way you want, just take it as a learning opportunity and use it to figure out how you can get better. You know what I mean? And it's a long game and like the road is winding, but like ultimately if you stay focused and you're relentless about it, you're going to get there. God, how'd you get so wise? I do a lot of freaking podcasts with smart people. (laughs) It's not me. I'm just, I'm just soaking it up. I'm a sponge. Um, Am I being too over the top? Am I being a blowhard? Uh, No, I'm like, I'm going to cry if you don't stop talking in all those (laughs) proverbs. Just wise proverbs, sage psalms. So... The other one that I thought was really telling um, as to, you know, what is in part responsible for her success was that Tia Claire Toomey, and this is just fresh in my mind, but she was so adamant that you need to be passionate about the process, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And the way in which she was drawn to things that maybe she wasn't as good at and why that's made her a master of so many things within her world of CrossFit. Yeah. Um, but that's just so applicable to everything, right? It's like you just – if you go into it knowing and expecting there's going to be setbacks and shortcomings and failure, but you just look at it through the lens of, hey, this is like a data point that I'm getting back that I can use to either modify my approach. Um, you know what I mean? Like it, it's just getting you that much closer to your goal. So it does feel like you know two steps forward, one step back. But I really think after a lot of the folks that we've talked to, like that has kind of been a recurring theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And people are probably sick of hearing about these pull-ups. But (laughs) if you're still listening and you're into this, you're like, no, I kind of get it. Like, I'm going to pull ups. All right. I get it. Uh, (laughs) Here's the official feedback. So the first, what, 13 reps counted? No. Okay. So here's what I did. Um, and I didn't finish this point. I I went out and I was like, look, I'm going to just knock out 16 reps as fast as I can. And so I did 16 unbroken, which used to be the record. Uh, however, I did kind of like I was saying with that adrenaline, like my form kind of got wonky on the last three to four. Mm. Like I started kind of getting more tired than I would be in my training Mm -hmm. and I didn't go down all the way. So I got knocked for not quite going down all the way. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, okay. I, so now I know like, look, I have verification of what 12 good reps look like. So that's a data point for me. I also know now (laughs) the reps that they won't count exactly what those look like. So my approach now is like when I go in and train, only do perfect reps. Yeah. And I know that sounds obvious, but to anyone who's like trained, you know, like like when you go to failure and the last couple are like, rule. yeah, you're just trying to like push through it or you're like, oh, I'm going to get stronger by kind of over, um, not achieving. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, overworking kind of, yeah. Like overreaching, you know, like I'm going to do more weight or do more reps than I know I can to like get stronger. And now I'm like only perfect reps. Like I'm going to build that muscle memory to where like my body only knows how to do it the right yeah. way. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to leave any room uh, for doubt. And then, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix up my rep strategy next time. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Pretty tell. Yeah. So instead of doing the 16 right out the gate, because right now the record's still 18, I'm sure someone will push it out before I test again because that's just I, the way it works. I hope not. <laughs> um, I can't take that. Yeah. I'm going to break I'm gonna break it up a little bit different next time. So more to come on that. Um. Oh, here's the other thing. So both both times that I've done it, I've I've actually done the the record attempt twice, like back to back. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do it once and then I'll wait ten to fifteen minutes. Are you yawning? I'm so sorry, but it, but I did it out of the mic, so no one else would have known if you hadn't just told. <laughs> no, I think me. that's a good cue that maybe this is uh, maybe I've taken this <laughs> this tale as far as it needs to go. No, no, no. Finish telling. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but there's another record, the 60 pound pull up record, which I've had my eye on. But mm-hmm. this just goes to show you like how weird this little like weird world record world yeah, is. It's all the same people. It's a lot of the same people. Um, but also the records like it doesn't even matter when they attempt them; they just get verified at very strange times. So I went in to do the 100 pound pull up record. I was going to plan to break the 60 pound world pull up record right after, like mm-hmm. rest 10 to 15 minutes. As soon as I felt fresh, go at it again. 
they updated the 60 pound record like the day before. So I literally went to go get on the bar to try and then break the 60 pound record and just yeah. decided to just see if there was an update. And some guy had pushed it out to like 28 reps from 26. Yeah. Or, or from 20 or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God damn it. I think it was like 24, right? It was. Yeah. Maybe it was 24. So I should have just done that one earlier. That was stupid of me for waiting. But then some guy went out and pushed it out by like four more reps. So anyways, it's just like a constant, you know, moving, uh, know. moving field just goal. keep getting stronger, right? Keep getting stronger. But that's what makes it fun. Yep. So yep. anyways. Yep. yep. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Enough self-righteous. I'm still proud of you. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Appreciate that. Um, well, I hope the point came across. Yeah, I think I think it did. Yeah. Did, <laughs> was 40, 40 minutes enough to get that point across? I think so. Is it a cross or a crossed? Hmm. Here's another thing about me. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the first time you said that, I was like, that sounded weird. And the second time I was like, no, no, I don't think that's right. Sorry. So let me spell what I think I'm saying. <gasps> Get the point across. Get the uh, A-C-R-O. No. So here's the thing that most people don't realize, <laughs> especially those who interact with me on email. Because like the finished product that gets delivered to their inbox usually looks pretty coherent. <gasps> I'm a terrible speller. <laughs> You're such a bad speller. I have horrible grammar. <gasps> yeah. um, like it just really doesn't click for me. Yeah, I'm getting much better thanks to autocorrect. Like <laughs> I'm a good proofreader though. You're, you're, you are. You, I'm like the little fairy that goes in and makes everything. Yeah, I mean not that I'm doing that on your work emails, but like, <laughs> which is scary. <laughs> Yet I survive. You survive. A lot of failure, folks. Uh, <laughs> what if I just like sat alongside you upstairs and just read everything you're writing to correct it? Oh God, that'd be nice. <gasps> You would like that? I've learned to be very concise and I've learned Aww. to stay in my wheelhouse <laughs> and say things that the way I know that they should be said. Because <laughs> okay. if I start freestyling, <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, I can't, I really can't spell very well. <laughs> like I'm actually a little worried about the day when my daughter starts asking me how to spell like more complicated words. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. She'll have to ask M- Nana. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like uh, oh, never mind. I'm not even gonna, you want, the, the reference will be lost on you. What? Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, it's lost. Yeah, well, over my head. Anyone who listens and watches Always Sunny, they're like, oh, I knew where he was going. God, that was gonna be so good. Okay, say it. I've already forgot. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's wrap it up. Listen, right. folks. <laughs> here's a big takeaway: set a big goal for yourself. Accept that failure is part of the process, um, and just use it as a stepping stone. To keep refining your strategy and getting better. Because, I mean, the, the one thing that everyone said who's really achieved long-term success, they're just relentless. Yeah. And no matter the obstacle, they are going to figure it out. So just be willing to, you know, extend your time horizon, keep chipping away. Um, and also, if you've got anything you're working on, let us know. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we always love to hear the feedback. But uh, after this episode, if there's some goal, let, let me know. I'd be interested to hear. Uh, and if I can point you in the direction of some of the resources that have helped me, man, I'd be happy to do it. Alrighty. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, we will talk to you next week. See you later.